Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now we're going to do a grab bag this evening, just talk about a lot of little stories, no big story to talk about. But uh, a lot of interesting trends and things going on. The first thing I wanted to show you is this chart. This is a chart of the Dow Jones transportation average crossed over the Dow Jones 30 industrial average as uh, Andy Hoffman calls it the Dow Jones propaganda average. And the reason why he calls it that, of course, is because that's the one thing that they can point to that says that things are okay as everything else is falling apart. Now, if you look at this chart closely, uh, barring one exception here, which is going to be here, uh, when we see the kind of divergence we're seeing right now, you can see the Dow Industrials is there, or the Dow Transports is there, the Dow Industrials is there. Big divergence between those two. The last time we saw something like that was when we got this huge drop in the transports, then a rally, and then they both failed right there. Now, admittedly, we do have this exception where the... Uh, uh, transports fell and uh, kind of went sideways and then they both rallied but right now we're looking at a really big divergence so this could be portending that we're going to get um, the next big market crash here it is on the monthly chart you can see a pretty big divergence the transports are definitely heading down whereas the uh, industrials are not really moving yet now I want to take you to uh, oil. Of course, we know that uh, we're going down and down and down. And uh, you can see it looks like we're trying to actually break the lows in 2009. And that's absolutely astounding that we could be down at those prices without having huge repercussions in the uh, financial markets. But we haven't seen them yet. I think they're brewing. Um, now I want to show you, this is my only, uh, I've shown you before, this is my only uh, Forex position that I have, and it is a um, cross of the South African Rand. Basically what I tried to do was, as a test, uh, I wanted to see um, how I could make money off of shorting uh, a currency that I really thought was in a bad shape. And uh, that would be the South African Rand. That was the one I was most bearish on. Now I wanted to pick a cross of it and I actually was gonna pick the Chinese Yuan, but my Forex account didn't allow that cross. So the one I chose was the South African Rand crossed over the Japanese Yen. Now the reason that I chose that cross is because the Japanese yen has been so pummeled I figured it was due for a bounce so that was a good one I could use the cross on I could have done the US dollar but I'm actually believe it or not a little bit more bullish on the US dollar than I am uh, on the Japanese yen than I am on the US dollar just because the yen has been pounded for so long so you can see here we had a big collapse today uh, I'm not adding to that position yet but I will probably add to that position. I think that uh, if you look at the chart here, uh, there's nowhere to go but down. And uh, I, I think that uh, South Africa is really in big trouble. Uh, so you can see from this article on Zero Hedge, South African bonds crash, Rand hits record low after uh, Finmin fired. And it goes into the article. You can see the move there. That's the uh, bond yields. And there's a US dollar uh, rand but uh, one comment pretty much uh, sums it up here and of course it is about what I talked about when I initially put this position on is the mining and the power the economy is under strain because of plunging metal prices and power constraints the central bank is forecasting growth of 1.4 percent this year which would be the slowest pace since the 2009 recession. Uh, South Africa is run by the communist Jacob Zuma, and uh, he's an open communist. He's uh, uh, 
admitted Marxist. Uh, he's a racist. He hates white people. And uh, it's just uh, the a continuation of the communist tradition there. And of course, what do communists do? They run your country into the ground. So I'm not going to, I'm not anywhere near getting off of that position. I'll soon be adding to it. So let's get over to Bitcoin. And uh, this is a fascinating chart here. Uh, ooh, uh, we've actually got a, a move into new highs in, in the Chinese, it looks like. Um, well, it showed 430. I guess not, but you can see here um, from the Chinese Yuan Bitcoin cross, we're at the equivalent of about 426 uh, Bitcoin to the dollar when you convert those uh, Yuan to dollars. But if we go over to the Bitstamp chart, put it out to the three day, you can see that the, the rally has finally come, the turnaround has finally come, it's been a long time coming. But uh, again, in a, in a bull market like this, uh, it takes time and there's a lot of parabolic moves, then there are corrections, and then it goes higher. That, that's what we saw with stocks uh, such as AOL, Microsoft, Cisco Systems, uh, new technologies uh, that uh, go hundred and thousand fold, and that's what Bitcoin is doing. Now I did some rough back of the matchbook calculations on the price and uh, based on, I'm just gonna go based on that top that we had uh, back in 2013 to where it went. I'm gonna say that if this pattern continues and there's no way for me to know if it will continue, but I believe it will continue. If this pattern continues, then what this is forecasting if this scenario repeats, is a $5,000 Bitcoin price. That will be the next top. Um, and then it's, of course, going to correct back to about $1,000. So uh, my prediction right now is that the run-up is going to be about $5,000 per Bitcoin and then a correction back down to $1,000 per Bitcoin. Now, let's look at some other stories here. There's stories coming fast and furious about the South American economies and what's going on with them. We have this sudden move to the right. It was inevitable that it would happen. But before we do that, I wanna look at the Baltic Dry Index. This is a chart from Zero Hedge. And uh, we know that we're coming up on this Fed interest rate move next week the Fed has to uh, raise rates or be completely discredited. Uh, they were given a, a pass in September when it, it seemed like they were hemming and hawing about it, but now they've been fairly consistent in saying that they are going to raise rates at this December meeting. And if they don't, then they are going to be completely discredited. But it's amazing that they can be looking at raising rates in the face of things like this. You can see the Baltic Dry Index has taken out all-time historical lows. We're talking about lows. Uh, the only other low we can find that even rivals where we are right now is 1986. And uh, we, we've already taken out the low that we put in at the last financial crisis so this is a, an unbelievable chart. Um, the Fed is in a terrible position. Uh, the world's economies are crumbling. Uh, the people are suffering. And uh, we're actually seeing that now in the election. So let's go and look at some of these elections here. Um, these are amazing. Uh, we have these socialist parties that I've railed against for the last few years, they're all falling at the same time. You've got Argentina is now, uh, they have a new conservative president, and uh, he says this signals the end of the Peronist populism. Uh, there was a story on Zero Hedge about how uh, this Cristina Fernandez lunatic psychopath I've talked about a lot of times, who's destroyed their currency and seized their pensions, um, she's trying to do everything she can to destroy the new administration, but uh, the socialists are on their way out. 
And uh, you can see the story. Argentina's newly elected center-right president, uh, Mauricio Macri, signals intentions to overturn more than a decade of wide-ranging leftist fiscal and social policies forged by the country's outgoing Peronist party in his inaugural address Thursday. So uh, a big victory for conservatives in uh, Argentina. Then we have Venezuela, a resounding defeat for that madman, the bus driver, Nick Maduro, uh, where uh, they actually assassinated, just days before the election, Maduro assassinated one of the opposition leaders in public, in an actual public speaking event. But again, he's lost. On Sunday, voters in Venezuela delivered a stinging rebuke to Nicolas Maduro and his ruling party by electing a coalition of opposition lawmakers to parliament that is large enough to challenge his socialist policies and can conceivably cut short his term in office. So this was a landslide. Of course, this is a country where they ran out of toilet paper. So when the people run out of toilet paper, uh, they're going to be asking some questions. Uh, they probably hadn't run out of toilet paper for a uh, hundred years, but they ran out of toilet paper. So the people woke up on that one. We have another one here in Brazil. We have this socialist woman, uh, Dilma Rousseff, uh, and, and she's finished. She's going to be impeached. Uh, at the center of the impeachment crisis uh, is the PMDB party. For 25 years, Brazil's biggest political party has made and broken governments patiently profiting from patronage without ever taking an ideological stance or an overt leadership role. But with the country now in the midst of a political and economic crisis, they helped to pre precipitate elements in the king-making Brazilian Democratic Movement Party are finally pushing their own claim to the throne. And uh, so you can see they're pushing out this socialist president here in, in Brazil. Um, and we also have the surging of popularity of Marine Le Pen in France. Marine Le Pen, and this could be someone who could actually propose that France leave the EU. Uh, Marine, Pe Marine Le Pen's FN party is close to regional power. It is rare that identical front pages appear in Le Figaro, the voice of conservative France, and Le La Humanité, the French Communist Party daily last Monday after Marine Le Pen led the Front National FN to first place in regional council voting, both newspapers splashed Le Choc. The words showed how far the establishments of both right and left are out of touch with the country's moods. The FN's 28% share of the vote in the first round of elections in the 13 regions was anything but a shock. For three, three decades, politicians in the media have voiced alarms when voters have turned to the FN, which they deem beyond the pale of democracy. So we see all these moves to the right against socialism. Now, hopefully, uh, there's no guarantee of it, because often when we move to the right, we get a move towards crony capitalism. Of course, crony capitalism is not free market capitalism. Uh, a, a good move to the right would be a move towards free market capitalism, and, of course, uh, being friendly towards gold, silver, Bitcoin, things like that. Any of these governments could do that, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if they just uh, got in bed with the uh, crony capitalists that have run things in South America for a long time. So things are looking up for South America right now. It doesn't mean that this is going to continue. Hopefully, um, that will be a place where Americans can flee if uh, America, which I think it takes a long time for a socialist nation to turn around. We've seen that in Greece. Greece is continuing to spiral down uh, into just um, economic destruction. Um, they're not turning towards the free market. They're just continuing down the same path and being subject to the uh, EU powers. So a lot of interesting news today and uh, the changes are coming fast and furious. We're, we're watching that Fed meeting, and I think that there's a possibility that there may be a very big event that occurs uh, with the announcement of that because pretty much the Fed has to do something this time. So we're going to finish with the silver chart. You can see here, let's pull up the 
uh, MACD on the silver chart. Uh, this has got to be one of the most uh, beaten down and undervalued assets that you can imagine. Um, it's so low in regards to historical prices based on any kind of inflation adjusted price. Um, we're talking about either prices down around in here or probably prices down around in here. Um, I haven't made any recommendations lately because I've been watching things very closely and I'm still waiting for junk silver premiums to come down. Uh, for me, with uh, silver being at $14 and junk being at $18, that's just not a good price for me to recommend people piling in. Also, keep an eye on the uh, Lunar Series and some other coins that I'm going to follow and uh, do some updates on pretty soon. And we'll talk to you next time.